Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. UN designates Pakistan-based terrorist Abdul Rahman Maki as global terrorist. Delhi police apprehends terror suspects for planning targeted killings in India. And malnutrition threatens the lives of millions of vulnerable children in Afghanistan. Let's begin the show. The UN Security Council has declared 2611 mastermind Hafiz Said's brother-in-law a global terrorist. They have put curbs on his movements as well as his assets. United Nations has listed Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba leader Abdul Rahman Makki as a global terrorist under the 1267 UN Sanctions Committee. Makki has been involved in raising funds, recruiting and radicalizing youth to violence and planning attacks in India, especially in Jammu and Kashmir. A report. The United Nations Security Council has listed Pakistan-based terrorist Abdul Rahman Makki as a global terrorist under the 1267 UN Sanctions Committee. This listing comes after China last year blocked India's attempt to name the Lashkar-e-Taiba leader a global terrorist. With this move, the UNSC has placed a travel ban, asset freeze and arms embargo on Makki. Makki is the brother-in-law of Lashkar chief and 2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed. He has been involved in raising funds, recruiting and radicalizing youth to violence and planning attacks in India, especially in Jammu and Kashmir. Also, he has occupied various leadership roles within LET and played a major role in raising funds for LET operations. We welcome the decision of the UN Security Council's ISI and Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee to list lashkar e taiba terrorist Abdul Rahman Maki, who is also the brother-in-law of LET leader Hafiz Said. Maki has occupied various leadership roles in the LET, including raising funds for the organization. Threats from terrorist organizations in the region remain high and listings and sanctions by the UN Security Council are an effective tool to curb such threats and dismantle terror infrastructure in the region. India remains committed to pursuing a zero-tolerance approach to terrorism and will continue to press the international community to take credible, verifiable and irreversible action against terrorism. In June 2022, India slammed China for blocking India-US joint proposal to designate Maki as a global terrorist. Earlier, China had stalled India's bid to list Masood Azhar as a global terrorist at least four times in the last 10 years. Politics should never ever provide cover to evade accountability, nor indeed to facilitate impunity. Regrettably, we have seen this of late in this very chamber when it comes to sanctioning of some of the world's most dreaded terrorists. If egregious attacks committed in broad daylight are left unpunished, this council must reflect on the signals we are sending on impunity. There must be consistency if we are to ensure credibility. The United Nations had finally designated Masood as a global terrorist in 2019. And the latest listing comes after a gap of three years. China has finally removed its hold on the listing of the Pakistan-based terrorist and reports suggest that China may have come under international pressure to list Maki as a global terrorist. As per US State Department in 2020, an anti-terrorism court in Pakistan convicted him of terrorism financing and sentenced him to prison. However, despite these actions, the terror group Lashkar-e-Taiba remains active in Pakistan and continues to disturb peace and stability in the India's Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. According to U.S. Congressional report, Pakistan is also home to 12 foreign terror organizations, five being India-centric, including Lashkar-e-Taiba and jaish e muhammad U.S. officials have also identified Pakistan as a base of operations for numerous armed and non-state terrorist groups 
some of which have existed since the 1980s. From radicalization of its youth to training and arming them for anti-India activities, Pakistan continues to keep terror outfits as part of its statecraft. Delhi police recently apprehended two terror suspects for planning targeted killings in India. According to police officials, the two suspects were in direct contacts with at least four persons who have links with Pakistan-based terror organizations Harkat ul Ansar and Hizbul Mujahideen. Police identified the slain ultras as Noshid Ali and his associate Jagjit Singh. A report. Delhi police recently apprehended two terror suspects for planning targeted killings in India. According to police officials, the two terror suspects were in direct contact with at least four persons who have linked with Pakistan-based terror organization Harkat ul Ansar and Hizbul Mujahideen. Police identified the slain ultras as Noshrat Ali and his associate Jagjit Singh. As per police statement, both were in touch with Nazir Bhatt, Nasir Khan and Nazir Khan of the Harkat ul Ansar outfit and Nadeem from the Hizbul Mujahideen, which has been designated as a terror outfit in India and Canada. The revelations come days ahead of the Republic Day celebrations in Delhi, where security has been heightened for the event. The two arrested terrorists were tasked to carry out targeted attacks on Hindu leaders. Both the terrorists have been kept under 14-day police custody and further investigation is being carried out to bust the entire network. Recently, while addressing the press conference, Pramod Kushwaha, additional CP of Special Cell, shared that the terrorists killed a man in December 2022 to demonstrate their capabilities to their handlers. Special Cell team two terrorists जिनमें से एक का नाम नौशाद है, एक का नाम जगजीत जैसा है, इनको 12 तारीख को जांगिरपुरी के एरिया से पकड़ा गया है। इस टीम को लीड एसीपी हरदेवूषण और एसीपी ललित नेगी कर रहे थे, जिसमें इंस्पेक्टर विनोद बडोला और इंस्पेक्टर सतीश राणा थे। ये टीम काफी टाइम से टेरर के केसेस पे काम कर रही इनकी अरेस्ट से इनके पास से दो हैंड ग्रेनेड जो कि मिलिट्री ग्रेड हैंड ग्रेनेड्स हैं तीन पिस्टल्स और कार्टिसेस मिले हैं इन्होंने एक आदमी का मर्डर भी किया था दिसंबर के महीने में और वो मर्डर इन्होंने सिर्फ इसलिए किया था ताकि जो इनके क्रॉस बॉर्डर हैंडलर्स हैं उनको ये अपना कैपेबिलिटी डेमोन्स्ट्रेट कर सकें Harkatul Mujahideen al Islami is a Pakistan based Islamic Jihad group operating primarily in Kashmir. The group have been considered as having links to Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda. Dekha jaye ki bahut hi timely hamari teams ne is pe action kiya aur ho sakta hai ki agar ye log timely na pakde jate to koi serious ghatna ko anjam de pate. With the radicalization that has occurred in Pakistan, visible in the street power of the Islamist groups that the political establishment has not been able to handle without compromises. India remains vulnerable with Pakistan and Talibanized Afghanistan next door, not to mention the emergence of the Islamic State elements there. By maintaining the focus on terrorism, India is indirectly maintaining pressure on Pakistan to contain its terrorist proclivities. India has called for another nations to take action on those who support, encourage and finance terrorism. Pakistan since the advent of India's independence in 1947 consistently follows an anti-India stance in all its political strategy formulation. Islamabad's policies towards India are nothing but myopic and self-destructive in nature. Perhaps to them, being blindly anti-India in every facet of external and neighbourly relations is the reason they tray for their existence. The negativity of the two-nation theory continues to drive their mindsets towards India. Realising that it cannot halt India's march towards the latter's economic progress and rise as a regional and global power, 
Pakistan has been creating terrorist-related problems for India in Jammu and Kashmir as other forms of cross-border provocations. Malnutrition and pollution have caused a massive increase in the number of children suffering from pneumonia in Afghanistan. Low-income families, even the more common, are forced to use low-quality coal to warm their houses. They are collecting tyres, shoes and waste to burn, which is ultimately increasing pollution levels throughout the country. Take a look. The pneumonia ward of Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul is full of sick infants suffering from lung infections and other respiratory diseases. Children lay on a single bed with their concerned parents and some overworked hospital staff keeping an eye on them. The worried mothers of these children could be seen holding tiny oxygen masks to infants' faces. 22-year-old Mariam is among them. I'm a doctor, but I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor, but I'm a doctor. بار سیوم گفت بستر میشه و یادش خراب از زیاد سنیش زیگ گرفته بود باز بسترش کرد یا یا کنی مزار نخسش میشد پنج سال رفیش گرفتیم دیگه دگیش من دو بات متفاوتیش نیمیشه خریدی. Malnutrition and pollution have caused a massive increase in the number of children suffering from pneumonia. According to a report by Reuters, Mohammad Arif Hassanzai, the head of internal medicine at Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul, said that, our patients have increased compared to the past. The main reason is the economy. Low-income families, ever the more common, are forced to use low-quality coal to warm their homes. They are collecting tires, shoes and waste to burn, which is ultimately increasing pollution levels throughout the country. Malnutrition has also been cited as a contributing factor to the increase in pneumonia and other respiratory cases among infants and children in Afghanistan, causing weakened immune systems. Facing a grim choice between warming their homes or eating, Afghans have been left in pain and hopelessness. Unfortunately, the crisis in the country is likely to worsen. Over 180 international organizations have suspended operations during the crucial winter months as a result of the ban on female NGO workers. These organizations are unable to function in the conservative nation without female staff to reach out to children and women. Returning to its own Sharia-based rule, the Taliban is attempting to erase women from public life and erase any progress made in the last two decades. What they've done is to try to sentence Afghan uh, women and girls to uh, a dark future uh, without opportunity. And the bottom line is that no country is going to be able to succeed, much less thrive, if it denies half its population the opportunity uh, to contribute. Um, and to be clear, and we're engaged with other countries on this right now, there are going to be costs if this is not reversed, if this is not changed. Afghanistan is facing isolation and suspension of humanitarian operations over restrictions on women. The country is in a deep state of crisis. However, the Taliban have made it clear that they will not be reversing their latest decrees. Despite repeated multilateral and bilateral discussions, little progress has been made since the Taliban takeover in August of 2021. So far, 2023 appears full of disappointment and sadness for Afghanistan's most disenfranchised. With each day bringing a new blow, the future appears hopeless and bleak. Moving on. Terror factories in Pakistan and along the line of control in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir continue to infiltrate terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. 
The objective is to incite violence in the Union territory at the request of Pakistan's army and spy agency, the ISI. However, Indian security forces are vigilant enough to respond appropriately. In the latest operation, security forces eliminated two Lashkar terrorists in Badgam district. A report. Pak back terrorists with the support of their mentors across the borders have unleashed a reign of terror on innocent civilians in Jammu and Kashmir. Today, even as the people of the region yearn for peace, the state has been stained with the blood of innocence. However, the Indian security forces have done the yeoman service to the nation by way of successful counter-terrorist operations. Recently, on January 17, security forces neutralized two dreaded Lashkar terrorists in Kashmir's Bargam district. Acting on a piece of specific information regarding the presence of terrorists in the Jammu and Kashmir, police and security forces launched a joint cordon and a search operation in the area. During the search operation, as the joint search party approached towards the suspected spot, the hiding terrorist fired indiscriminately upon the joint search party, which was retaliated effectively, leading to an encounter. Police identified the slain ultras as Arbaz Mir and Shahid Sheikh. As per police records, both the terrorists were involved in several crime cases, including attacks on police and civilian atrocities. Though Pakistan says that it does not support any terrorist organization, but the whole international community knows that the real story is otherwise. And this is the reason that thrice Pakistan has been on the FATF grey list. Pakistan uses terrorism as an instrument of its state policy, which can be seen from the fact that the most notorious terrorists roam freely in Pakistan. They repeatedly wage a war against India, and despite India submitting dossiers on these dreaded terrorists, till date Pakistan has not taken any action on them. Pakistan uses these terrorists and terrorist organizations to create mayhem in India. The situation in Jammu and Kashmir has shown a considerable improvement, symbolizing a return to normalcy. The security environment has considerably shifted in the favor of security forces. The terrorists have suffered heavy attrition and simultaneously have not been able to replenish their dwindling cadres due to the effectiveness of the counter-infiltration measures. This has led to a sharp decline in the violence inflicted by terrorists. Counter-terror data reveals that the total number of terror-related incidents has come down from 417 in 2018 to 110 up to September 30, 2022, with 255 incidents in 2019, 244 in 2020, 228 in the entire 2021, and 90 up to September 30, 2022. The Indian security forces are framing strategies for uprooting the terror ecosystem to consolidate peace in the region. In Pakistan, the religion is deeply meshed with politics. And this is the reason that when dreaded terrorists and terrorist organizations roam freely in Pakistan for fundraising activities in the name of religion and to wage a war against India, the Pakistani government cannot do anything. It is the support of the Pakistani government to these fanatic religious organizations which has created immense trouble for India. These terrorists roam freely because they have the state patronage of the Pakistani government and the Pakistani army. People in Kashmir have understood that terrorism and separatism cannot flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. For Pakistan, which has been attempting to internationalize the Kashmir issue for more than seven decades, this is the worst suffering. The notorious intelligence agency of Pakistan, ISI, aims to reawaken the fear of being killed in the minds of ordinary Kashmiris. However, such heinous terrorist activities 
will not be able to undermine the advancement of Jammu and Kashmir. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.